Our final speaker before the discussion is uh, Marco Ranieri, as you just heard. Marco is uh, currently in Pisa and is going to tell us about breath-by-breath -breath assessments of um, recruitment. Thank you very much. And for the second year in a row, I didn't get my lunch. Last year, the same section of Berlin, no lunch. This year in Rome, no lunch. Well, I don't know, something wrong with me. Yes, good for me. As Loran pointed out, a few years ago, and the credit for this approach have to go entirely to Milik Emily, the first Canadian in my life, the second one is Art Slusky. He suggested to use the shape of the pressure time curve, which is currently available on any ventilators in the ICU during constant flow inflation to monitor the change in compliance in sedated and paralyzed patients. His idea was to use the shape of the curve to predict the changes in compliance. An upward concavity in the pressure time curve during constant flow in inflation should indicate that compliance is progressively decreasing with the inflating volume, that is, over the stanchion. On the other hand, a downward concavity during the constant flow time would suggest a progressive increase in compliance with tidal volume inflation, suggesting a continuous recruitment during baseline ventilation. And with this in mind, we verified whether the shape of the static volume pressure curve corresponded to the shape of the dynamic pressure time curve during the constant flow inflation. And you see here two patients. In this patient was evident a clear lower inflection point and an upward concavity on the static volume pressure curve, which was reflected by exactly the same shape on the dynamic pressure volume curve. In this case, a downward concavity, no lower inflection point on the static volume pressure curve, the one that Laurent presented, which was essentially identical to the shape of the dynamic pressure volume curve. And when we quantify this shape using a mathematical fitting, we observe that the shape of the dynamic curves almost corresponded to the shape of the static volume pressure curve. Can we then use this approach to estimate the amount of stress, as was defined by the previous speakers, that mechanical ventilation is imposing to the lung of a patient during acute respiratory distress syndrome. This is an animal model that we developed during my sabbatical in Artslatsky lab, I have to say a couple of years ago now. This is an isolated, non-perfused model of acute lung injury. The animal was ventilated for three hours with a pressure time curve with a downward concavity. At the end of inspiration, this is how the lung looked like after three hours. In a second group of animals, the ventilator was set in order to obtain a straight pressure time curve during constant flow inflation. At the end of the three hours of experiment, this is how the, the lung looked like. Third group of animal ventilated to have an upward concavity in the pressure time curve. Again, after three hours, this is how the lung looked like. We use a mathematical approach to describe this shape of the curve using this equation here. Now, I don't want to bug you with, this, with math. What I want just to tell you that when the, the line, the pressure time curve was straight, suggesting that compliance was constant throughout inflation, this coefficient here was equal to one. A, a coefficient lower than one indicated that compliance progressively increased with tidal volume, collapsed, progressively opened by tidal inflation. Higher than one, compliance progressively decreased with inflation the lung was over the standard. This is how we set the ventilator in order to obtain 
a straight line. First, tidal volume was fixed to 6 ml per kilogram. Then, PEEP was progressively increased in order to obtain a straight line. Then, we applied several recruiting maneuvers using the 40 by 40 approach as described originally by Marcelo Amato. And then, if B was equal to 1, we assumed that ventilation was not causing any stress. If B was lower than 1, we again increased the PEEP level until the coefficient P was equal to 1, so the line appeared again straight, and then we repeated the recruiting maneuver. If B was higher than 1, indicating over this tension, we decreased PEEP until again we obtain a straight line. In a such a way, we are able to dynamically test the response of the injured lung to the opening approach. And only with this approach, and that was our hypothesis, we could identify the fully recruited lung. First of all, it's very interesting that if you compare the static approach to set non-stressful mechanical ventilation, PEEP higher than the lower inflection point, and tidal volume lower than the upper inflection point, compared to the values of PEEP and the plateau pressure that you obtain using the, the dynamic approach, the stress index approach, you end up with a higher level of PEEP and lower level of plateau pressure in line with the criticism that has been raised by Luciano on the use of static volume pressure curve to set the magic peak value, peak value. And here is the relationship between several indexes of injury or ventilator-induced lung injury, histology, and production of inflammatory mediators in the bronchial viola lavage in the different animals. The horizontal line here indicates the amount of histological injury or the amount of production of inflammatory mediators that just you have by causing acute lung injury and then you don't ventilate the animal. You see the point? You see what I'm saying? The lung here was injured and then we did not add the second hit, the second insult the one resulting from mechanical ventilation. So all the animals that were ventilated with a straight line, with a stress index equal to one, had values of histological damage or of production of inflammatory mediators below the line that indicates the amount of injury that you have just by acute injury. On the other hand, Animals that were ventilated with a stress index lower than one, or animals that were ventilated with a stress index higher than one, had an increase in the different indexes of injury that we use in this study, obtaining a nice U-shaped relationship between the stress index and the amount of injury. And let me make one point. It's extremely interesting from the physiological point of view, to see that opening or closing or over the stanchion were, closing, were causing exactly the same amount of injury in this experimental preparation. And then we analyze in terms of sensitivity and specificity the capability of B to identify the non-stressful mechanical ventilation and we obtain a quite high sensitivity and a reasonable good specificity. Now, you may say, who cares about this animal preparation, an isolated, non-perfused lung model of acute lung injury, a piece of dead meat. This is what we had to develop to verify this hypothesis in the clinical settings. This is a software that our engineers develop in our lab in order to obtain the stress index value at the bedside during mechanical ventilation in patients. Here you have the flow, and here you have the airway opening pressure signal. The software automatically identify the constant flow part and apply the equation to the corresponding part of the curve. Here you have a patient with a downward concavity. 
Here you have a patient with an upward concavity, and here you have a patient with a straight line, and the software is able to pick it up on a breath-by-breath -breath basis. With this tool in our hands, Salvatore Grasso developed this study, and we will present the data in the next few days. He compared the NIH trial strategy to protect the lung with the strategy coming from the use of the static volume pressure curve and with the strategy coming from the stress index approach to maintain B equal one. And he used exactly the same algorithm that we use in our animal study. First of all, the breathing pattern. With the ANI, that's it's the tidal volume and the peep level that came out of the different approach. NIH, six ml per kilogram, low level of peep, the volume pressure curve, 8 ml of tidal volume, 12 ml, 12 centimeter of water of PEEP, with the stress index, tidal volume was fixed to 6 by definition, but the PEEP level was about 16, 20 centimeter of water of pressure. The amount of alveolar recruitment estimated using the technique that Laurent Brochard described previously is clearly superior with the stress index approach, as the improvement of an oxygenation with the stress index approach, B equal one, was higher than all the other two possible algorithm. What next then? Well, what we can conclude based on this information that we may suggest the use on a breath-by-breath -breath basis of the shape of the pressure time curve, not to assess the amount of recruitment, not to assess the amount of overdistension, but just to know what is going on in terms of mechanical stress to the lung during our settings of mechanical ventilation. We just can tell if the lung with that ventilator setting is on stress or not. And the response to the different changes, the recruiting maneuver, the changing in PEEP, the changing in tidal volume, suggests that this is a very fast and dynamic response phenomenon. What we need to do? Well, first of all, we need to see if this stress index strategy really corresponds to an optimal pulmonary gas exchange and an optimal imaging of the lung. And this is what the PISA team, my new partners, are doing right in PISA. Does the stress index strategy correspond to the minimal activation of inflammatory mediators? And again, my colleague and friends in PISA are looking for that right now. How do we wean a patient out of this stress index? And this is my old partner, Salvatore Grasso, is trying to look in, in Bari right now. Can the stress strategy be automatically implemented on the ventilator? And this is what our engineers are developing together with Salvatore again and my previous location, Bari. Does this stress index strategy correspond or may protect an animal from the occurrence of ventilator-induced injury and multiple organ failure? And this is again what Yumiko and I is doing right now in Toronto's uh, in, in Arts Lasky Lab together with Hypozang. Now let's that's, that's end up with the, the religion of the randomized control trial. Can the stress index strategy provide better outcome than, for example, the NIH strategy? Well, provide someone will pay, we can do the study. So what the hell am I doing while all these people is working? And as we are having fun trying to find the money to do this study. Thank you very much.